Caddis Maximus here. This is a little review of the Harbor Freight uh, Chicago Electric little 3-inch cutoff tool. So this is essentially a plug-in version of a 3-inch uh, die grinder type cutoff tool. And you'd be much better off with like one of the Harbor Freight cheap air tool, chief air tools or some other brand of air tool for doing uh, these little cutoff operations. This is a pretty big tool. 3 amps, 20,000 RPM. They did recently update it, but it still has the same size motor, 3 amps. The big update that they did changing the body is they did add more ventilation. That was one of the big issues. Hundreds of uh, very negative reviews about this tool, a lot of them with failed motors. I expect a lot of that's just because people grab it, use the switch, and then just hold it something like this. And what ends up happening is you've completely blocked off those vents. And if your thumb's over this side, you've almost entirely blocked these vents. I'm going to open up at least the back of it. Opening up the front of it's pointless because it's just a ball bearing and a little aluminum case. Steel guard. This is the type of thing you would use uh, when you can't quite get an angle grinder into the situation, but you need something with more power than a Dremel because that's kind of what this is, is an overblown Dremel. Easiest way to say it. When I open it up, I'm going to cut out some of the internal baffling of the plastic just to try to give it just a little bit more airflow. Overall, it's they retail for 25 bucks, and it's only like 30 or 35 for one of the uh, Bauer angle grind, the cheap Bauer angle grinder, and that thing's a lot higher performance. So if you're doing this for cut off, getting one of these to do cutoff operations, and you, you don't need the compact, uh, straight nature of this, get yourself an angle grinder and some nice discs. You'll be much more satisfied. I actually found this at a thrift store, so obviously somebody else wasn't super satisfied with it. And uh, I only paid five bucks. And for me, uh, that's okay, because that's exactly what I'm going to use this for, is just for certain situations where you just have to cut off the end of a bolt or something uh, where you just don't have a lot of access. Since it's a pretty weak 3-amp motor, it only takes 3-inch discs. But with the body of the tool, you can see... Just not a lot of clearance. You're not going to have something that's really long and, and be able to cut it off. So it kind of restricts its actual usefulness. I will say, at least it's ball bearing. At least the bearings are pretty tight. It used a 5 millimeter socket head cap screw, which was annoying. Uh, so I just replaced that with a grade 10.9 uh, 10 millimeter fastener, just so it was easier to deal with replacing the blades. Anyway, let's go out and do a cut with this. I'll do a cut on this, which is a 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter shank bolt. That's a 1 and a 16th head, by the way. This is a grade 8 bolt, pretty strong bolt. And uh, I already made the cut. I'm kind of doing this video out of order. So we'll cut to me doing the cut on this. And then uh, just for a demonstration, I'll show the Bauer grinder with a 3M Cubitron 2 wheel just to show the stark difference in performance.
this is just to demonstrate the, the difference really in abrasives. That warrior wheel really sucked, even though it was super thin. We're gonna use the Bauer grinder with the Cubitron wheel just to show how fast it should go. Pretty dramatic difference. Okay, so that was the performance. It did cut out once on me and I just had to not press as hard. I just had to go pretty light to prevent it from cutting out, which slowed down the cut. Secondly, I'm only using one of the Harbor Freight 60 grit uh, Warrior wheels. Harbor Freight has two uh, types of wheels, thicknesses. Uh, a 364 thick wheel, which is what this is. And then they have uh, 16th inch wheels. And I do not recommend the 16, the thicker wheels at all. Even though they're more robust, the extra kerf, the extra material it's cutting off, and the resistance would make this tool basically useless because you just have to barely be pressing into it to prevent the darn thing from uh, overloading and kicking out the circuit breaker. They do have the circuit breaker to attempt to prevent you from burning up the motor, but really, they should have just given it a darn bigger motor. There was, you know, four, four and a half amps probably would have been enough. And they should have charged 30 bucks. So this is kind of cheesy. It seems to be okay for what it is, but it's unfortunately is underpowered and you have to make sure to use thin kerf wheels. And I don't recommend these warrior wheels. They just are terrible performance. But you saw with the Cubitron 2 uh, on that Bauer grinder just went right through this. It was like five times faster. It was pretty darn crazy. Uh, it was pretty darn crazy how long this took just to cut a piece of hardened steel that's only, you know, that big around, about as big around as a thumbnail. Um, so performance is not super great. Anyway, let's take a, it does have a, it is a paddle switch. It's actually surprisingly enough a metal lockout. Paddle switch actually does seem to work pretty smoothly. And if you're doing heavy duty cutoff operations, it does have a trigger lock. So I do appreciate that. As far as the inside, you do have to cut out the sticker to get out one of the screws here pull that out. We're not going to pull off the front of it because it's, you know, there's no gears or anything to look at there. There's just a ball bearing. The bearings wear out. It should be pretty simple to replace, although I don't know if this arbor is press fit or threaded onto the end of the motor. If it's press fit, then that's going to make it real tough to actually attempt to replace the thing. plastic is pretty cheesy you can see the baffles here they do have gaps in them to let air through but when the air it kind of has to come through hits this and comes off the side that does add to restriction and these little baffles don't do really anything for the rigidity of the housing so i think i am gonna just uh, cut these out of here internally things are actually looking a little better here we do have a switch which does have a little rubber dome to prevent grit from getting in there. That seems like a halfway decent switch. We've got our lever mechanism. How this works is it pivots right here. When you press it, it's pulling down on this steel finger, which of course then activates the switch. When you press it down, whoop, ah. <laughs> Love it, spring-loaded things that fall apart. When you activate the lock, this just hooks onto the back of it and prevents it from retracting. We have our little uh, breaker here. And if you're feeling bold and you get annoyed with this breaker constantly triggering and you have a good feel for whether or not you're actually getting to the point of burning up the motor, uh, you can, of course, just remove this and then actually just solder both these wires together to bypass it. This breaker is aggressively tuned, 3.5 amps. And another issue with these types of breakers on the tools, if you're using a tool like this a lot and r causing the breaker to constantly trip, over time the breaker will want to trip more easily. Uh, 
the more that it's essentially triggered and that will be an issue motor is not particularly great we can see we, it has folded over contacts uh, not really a lot going on there brushes are pretty easy to replace brushes actually seem decent because it's an all brass holder they're just a snap in affair screwed to the body not a whole lot going on as far as replacing the power cord at least that's a standard affair with just a regular cord pinch strain relief pretty easy to deal with I'm going to pull all this out so we can at least attempt to see. Super simple tool. Neither side of this plastic housing has any indications. It kind of feels like nylon, but they have no markings. And I'm trying to see if the switch has any markings. There we go. This switch must be some kind of like off-the-shelf affair because it is a 10 amp rated switch surprisingly enough way overrated for the 3 amp motor so I just assume it's kind of an off-the-shelf thing I am noticing something this is probably one of the worst parts we can see these fi fibers of wire so these wires were not properly staked on here and they've got all these loose strands so it's not even able to deliver all the amps that it possibly could because of that. Only way for me to really deal with this is I'm going to pull these off and uh, add a drop of solder just to help them out a little bit. So I just use some simple cutters. It's super soft plastic and just cut out some of those lower fingers and both sides. That way there's just a little bit more airflow going through the motor. Try to keep it a little bit cooler. Now I'm going to put some solder on these little uh, terminals. So that was my bad. After looking with a magnifying glass, I realized that there's the part of the crimp that's on the sheathing. The wire is properly crimped. It just was way overstripped, and you have a bunch of strands sticking out. Really annoying. Also, as far as bypassing, let me get some more zoom in here. I realize it's much more simple. This thing's going to be annoying. You kind of know if you're risking the motor at least hope you do anyway if you really get frustrated by this i realized that all you have to do is unplug it there unplug it there this is a two pole switch and connect it up like that now, it's actually super easy to bypass this little uh, circuit breaker that they got in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whoop, put this terminal back on here. Yeah, those terminals are tight. I'll give them that. That doesn't even want to go all the way on. I'm going to just leave it like that. I mean, for me, I certainly know how weak the tool is. And if I'm using it a bunch... I'll pause, let it settle, and just feel the body, see if it's getting too hot. But in this situation, now we've just bypassed this whole thing. I actually kind of like these. I'll save this for a project or something. And I'm actually just going to leave the, the whole thing out of the tool. Just <laughs> eliminate it. I'll even go as far as peeling off the little reset sticker because it don't have no reset no more. Just notice this like the brush springs all falling out so i'm gonna fix that up and then this is how the wiring looks there's actually a little guide so just ran the little wire through there there's actually a gap between the fingers so super simple to uh cut out that reset switch that breaker was i mean obviously it's meant to restrict current when you run too much power but i think it was just excessive because this is a tool that you end up um there we go. Running with a, it's pretty easy to overload it. So you just have to be careful if you can do that mod where you bypass the circuit breaker. That if you're really wailing on this or using this for longer periods of time or multiple cuts, you're just going to have to be aware of the, how hot the motor is getting. Um, and alternatively, you want to do something like use the trigger switch and then hold it in the back so you can get plenty of air flow through these little vents. Although the newer version uh, has much better ventilation, I think, to try to prevent the motors from burning up. You can see we do have a bit more uh, 
open now that I've cut those little slots out. And it seems to rev up a little quicker. I can certainly feel more airflow getting through here with just a little bit less restriction. Otherwise, you know, you just could also be just more aware and to grab it like this. Certainly does seem to uh, rev up a lot quicker. Anyway, that's my review, I guess, of the older model, uh, the 6823 of the Harbor Freight uh, little cutoff tool. The new one is basically the same tool with a different body on it and a bit, bit better ventilation, so at least they tried to make a difference. And this thing could be more useful. Really, what they need to do is have the spindle needed to be probably an inch longer so that you could just get a little more access and less interference with the body. And it needed to have something like a 5 amp motor uh, to really make it more useful. Otherwise, you know, funky little tool. And if you do have an air compressor uh, that moves decent flow, you, in this particular type of tool, a cutoff tool, uh, you are going to be better off with an air tool. Uh, an air cutoff tool just because they have a lot of power and they're very compact. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.